So let's take a look at the way uh, the null hypothesis is right now. We said that all the groups are equal. Well, the way StatKey wrote that is that all the groups would be 0.2 or 20%. Oh, of course. 100% divided by 5 would be 20% each. Right? So this is like stack key for they're all equal. Okay. Um, now, notice we got the same, uh, same uh, test statistic, 94.744, that we got in stack Cato. Also, if you want to see the expected counts, you can click on Show Details. The first number, the top number, is the observed. The middle number is the expected, and then the, the bottom one is the contribution to chi-square. They have them actually color-coded. The top one is the observed, the green is uh, expected, and the blue is the contribution to chi-square. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and, and simulate this, we could just click 1,000 simulations. We can see the chi-square, you know, again, the chi-square distribution looking very skewed right. It does not look very normal at all. Remember, it was a right tail. Okay, so again, if we want to see the critical value, we could put in 0 0.05. Now, this would be the estimated critical value from the simulation, not from the theoretical chi-square curve. But it's pretty close, about the same. Again, we can see our test statistic is definitely in the tail. To get the p-value, put your test statistic in this bottom box right here. So 94.744. And we're going to get a 0 p-value. Right? This would now be the p-value. Now, what if we, we said there was two types of goodness of fit, right? We have the equal to type, and then we have some kind of uh, maybe a distribution. Somebody has said something about that each group has a specific percentage. So I want to do that case now. I'm going to go back to stat key now. And now I'm going to look, instead of doing equal to, I'm going to do this one right here. I want, I'm actually thinking that about 30% of the stat students prefer Instagram, about 25% uh, prefer Facebook, 25% prefer Snapchat. Only 10% prefer Twitter and 10% prefer other. This is what I sort of think was true. And, and this is the good example of the other case, the case where they're not all equal, they're different. Okay? So with this one, obviously if you have this one, you have to sort of be have a way of telling the computer what your null and alter, what your null hypothesis was. So what I do is I type them in this way with just type the proportions in a column right here. You can also calculate the expected counts by hand, um, but I, I like the computer to calculate the expected counts for me. So I just type in whatever the proportions that were given in the null hypothesis. Those are the ones that I'm going to type in a, a column right here. Now let's go ahead and do this. Um, so let's, let's try that. Now, uh, if I go statistics, what did we say? Multinomial, right? And then goodness of fit. So uh, statistics, multinomial, goodness of fit. Now, notice that I could have done the raw data for my observed counts, or I could have typed in the observed counts. So if you have the observed counts already typed in, you can click on this button, frequencies and column, and just click observed. I like to title them to know what that what that was. It also you don't have to do this, but it does ask you for the names. I went ahead and typed the names in column three, so I'm going to put those in. Now notice again, the null hypothesis is not that the groups are equal. It's they're the, they're different now. So that means I want to click this one that says unequal frequencies. That means your null hypothesis was was that each group had a unique percentage or a unique proportion. They're not supposed to be equal. Now, you have a choice. This one says frequencies in column. Now, if you click that, that's looking for you, that you calculated the expected counts already and have them listed in a column. You can put it there. I prefer to click probabilities in column. That's basically the proportions from the null hypothesis. I type those in column six, so I'm just going to put those in column six. By the way, I could have also done this exactly same thing with using the raw data for the observed. I could have just clicked here for the raw data, or I can click the, the summary counts. Either one's going to give me the same answer. Again, I got my 5% significance level. Let's see what happens. All right. So now we see that the expected counts are different, right? So take a look at this. So 
Um, now that we have um, 30, we're expecting 30% like Instagram. Now my expected count uh, for Instagram is down 98.4. 25% for Facebook and Snapchat. See how these are both 82 now. See how there's a big change in the expected counts when we change the null hypothesis. And now, again, they're calculating the contribution to chi-squared. They're doing the observed minus the expected squared and then dividing by the expected. That's how they get these numbers. And, um, and, that, and there we get, again, the biggest discrepancy was still Instagram. But notice, again, our test statistic actually is um, quite a bit um, smaller than our test statistic for the equal to case. It's still significant because this is going to fall in the tail. Notice our critical value is still the same, 9.4878. But the test statistic is now 9.8577. So that's slightly in the tail if the tail starts at the critical value 9.4878. Notice our p-value is no longer 0. It's 0 0.0429. So we got a 4.29% p-value. Still is lower than our 5% significance level. Now, if you wanted to do the, the type 2, this one that I just did, in stat key, how would that look? Well, what you'd want to do is change the null hypothesis. Our sample data is already in there. We just need to change the null hypothesis. So we said that Instagram, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, Instagram, let me see, let me make sure, make sure we did this right. Yeah, we said that Instagram was 0.3, Facebook and Snapchat are 0.25. Okay. All right, so I want to make sure I get that right. So Instagram was 0.3, and Facebook and Snapchat are both 0.25, and then Other and Twitter are both 0.1 or 10%. So you can just change to whatever the null hypothesis. This is the type 2 goodness effect where, where each, each group had a unique percentage that's listed in the null hypothesis. All right, so now we're seeing if our, if our sample data fits this, right? So we push OK. And notice there's my chi-squared test statistic already calculated under original sample. Again, I can click Show Details, and I can see the expected counts and make sure they were bigger than five. They all were bigger than five. And now I can simulate the null hypothesis. So now it's not simulating equal to, it's simulating those percentages that I had typed in. Again, I'll click right tail and I'll put 0 0.05. Again, remember with simulation, guys, that you will get slight differences. Okay, so again, don't expect that you're going to get exactly what I'm getting on this simulation. My um, critical value estimate from the simulation was 9.313, but you might have gotten 9.4, you might have gotten 9.35. It will be close, but there is going to be some difference in these numbers because this is random samples, and random samples are always different. Okay, so don't think you're wrong if you simulate and get different answers that are on this, the different numbers that are on the, then are on this video. All right. Again, if we want the p-value, we want to put in the actual um, sample data chi-square, so 9.859. So if I type that in here, 9.859, I'm going to push OK. And there's our p estimated p-value, 0.036. I think in the Staccato with the traditional curve, we got uh, closer to 0 0.04 something. What was it? Let me take a look. It was 0 0.0429. Notice we're getting with the simulation 0 0.036. Both of them, though, are under our 5% significance level. So we are, again, going to reject the null hypothesis of these percentages. We're rejecting these percentages. Our sample data does significantly disagree with these percentages. Okay, so that's kind of a lot for, for uh, one video. I apologize, but when you got two different programs and two different uh, types of goodness of fit tests, but I hope it was helpful. So this is Matt Show and Intro Stats. I'll see you next time.